program. You know, they've been down to state the last couple of years. They're looking really good again this year. Um, and then swimming will host Lady Smith, which you know is Lakeland and Lady Smith every year mm -hmm. for, the, for the swimming. So that's going to be a big head-to-head -head meet. Swimming, uh, they were out of the pool for quite a while competitively, and um, they traveled to Tomahawk last week and had a double duel there, and they split it. You know, but when you have those competitive layoffs, you know. I, I, as a sports writer, you know, I always look at that and I kind of worry about those things because mm -hmm. you like to be out there, you like to be competing, you know, you've had the long preseason where you've been in the pool, you've been practicing, you, know, you want to get out there and you want to have your meets. Um, another big event coming up is the, the cross country teams are heading over to the Twin Cities for the GREAC Invitational. This is a huge invite, brings in schools from all over the country. Also, a lot of collegiate schools is one of the biggest collegiate meets. So these kids get to kind of see, you know, what's it like on that next level. Mm -hmm. So, and then one of the, probably the team of the week uh, for last week was the soccer team. You know, they went three and zero, beat Medford, came in uh, to the Lakeland invite, faced Wausau West, who was one of the leaders down there in the Valley Conference, mm -hmm. beat them two to one, and then came up and beat Kingsford two to one. Both those games they had to come back. They were down early, one to nothing, but they came back and won. And, and, a, and a guy to look out for here, Jared Dern, had three goals. In those three games. Oh wow! Yeah, here's a guy. Last year he was playing football. Yep. And he just decided this year to kind of come out for soccer, and you know he didn't play a lot in the beginning of the season, but obviously he's starting to learn it. He, big physical kid. I mean, sure. He gets out there, and those those defenders they can't they aren't going to muscle him. That's for sure. Yeah, it's hard to hard to hide athleticism on the soccer pitch, especially. Yeah. yeah. So, so he's yeah he's had three goals in the last three games, so we'll we'll see how he's going. Um, for the tennis team, they've had a little bit of trouble with Mother Nature. They've uh, <laughs> had a couple of meets rained out here. Um, yesterday, they were supposed to have the conference meet here. Rain, you know, kind of drizzling all day, so they didn't get that in, but they're going to have that Monday. Okay. So they're going to have that couple of players to watch there. Jenna Towers at four singles. Um, she moved over from one doubles, but uh, once she moved to four singles, she's really kind of found her home there in that mm -hmm. spot. So she's maybe a conference title in her future, we'll have to see. And another one is Erin. Chastic, she um, plays at two singles, and she's had some success. She, you know, she'll have to maybe upset a couple of people, but but she's played well. So yeah, I know Erin played well last year too, late in the season. I think she was one of our postseason berths that we had going down to sectional and subsectional stuff. So yeah, tennis team's always fun to watch. You know, late in the season, you don't know, you don't hear much about those girls, you know, throughout the year right. because they're pretty quiet with what they do. But right. you know, starting to make some noise now down the stretch, so that's good. And that's the thing too with tennis. You know, some of these younger girls, you know, a lot of these Lakeland players are younger. And as they kind of learn the position mm -hmm. and learn the competition, you know, you'll see them as we get into the postseason now, maybe make some noise. I think, Ray, you're still learning how to play tennis a little bit, aren't hey, you? Hey, just call me Roger Federer. <laughs> 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 well, that's cool. Plenty of stuff going on, sounds like. Anything uh, else, Brian? No, that's about it for now. You know, got the rump roast run tomorrow, like, really? like we had talked about. So we'll get down there and get some photos of that of people participating. So always a good time to get those runs. Oh, yeah. Seems like Monaco was a hotbed for those fun runs, 5Ks yeah. all over the place. Well, beautiful scenery, you yep. can run on trails, you know. I, I like to participate in a lot of runs, and mm -hmm. anytime you get a trail run compared to a road run where you're not, you know, busting up your knees and stuff like that on that asphalt, it's, it's, it's a great time. So. Yeah. Well, talking about runs, of course, we've got the Brewers making a big playoff run now. Six games left, um, you know, coming off of a not so good series down in Chicago where they took. Uh, Took one on the chin, seven to one yesterday, and ended up dropping two out of three. But six games left. They got 91 wins, 97. Uh, hopefully in their future. But three is the big number right now. Of course, it's their magic number that they need to clinch. So um, looking like hopefully with the Marlins and the Pirates coming in, two teams that they've played well against uh, so far this season. That uh, you know, two years ago or three years, 2008. You know, making the playoffs as a wild card and going in and playing Philly, the eventual champions of that season, of course. Um, so that's the the big matchup that everyone's predicting now for the National League Championship Series, I guess. Uh, Gallardo and Grinky go in the next two games, so you figure hopefully two two of the next two, and then try and get one more win out of the next four. So yeah, they just have to take care of their own business. Oh, exactly. So they don't have to worry about the Cardinals. So, you know, just win the games, win them out, uh, going to the postseason strong. Uh, MVP. Oh yeah. What do you think? Well. Brian, I don't know. I got Braun. Who do you got? Yeah, I'd have to say Braun. I mean, yeah. It's because he does, he does it all. I yep. mean, he's, he's the defender. He's, he's the hitter. I mean, he hits for average. He hits the home run. He steals bases. I mean, he, he can do everything. He, you can almost make the, you know, the argument that over the last couple of years, he's been the best player in baseball. I yeah. Mean, 
Well, if not one of the top. Exactly. You know, there's no question. And when you put him next to a guy like Prince Fielder, who I don't mm -hmm. think is just not as likable of a guy. You know, he, he's, he's a little standoffish with the media sometimes. He's not out, you know, really pushing the game of baseball like Braun is. You know, Braun is... Braun has pretty much been the face of the Milwaukee Brewers he is. and almost the face of baseball, you could argue, in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Young kid coming out of a Division One program down in Miami, you know, making a big ruckus his first rookie year up in Milwaukee and then saying, hey, you know what, this is where I want to play baseball. Signing a big contract that locks him down until, I think, 2020, mm -hmm. you know. Something like that. Yeah, another, exactly. At least another 10 years. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah definitely. A, he's one of those guys that just kind of does everything right. And, and yep. You know, we, we've seen some of those guys, you know, fall from those pedestals before, but, but so far he seems like he's the guy that you know, will sign autographs. Mm -hmm. and but, but you know what, you know, to, to defend Prince Fielder a little bit, you know, I, I, I don't know if Brian, Ryan Braun would be the player he is without Prince Fielder. I mean, you got him, you know, you got, you got the best three or four hitters in Milwaukee since, since Hank Aaron and, and uh, Eddie Matthews. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I mean, they're dynamite together. Will Prince Fielder be back? <laughs> Do they have the money? Will he take less money to stay with the Brewers, to stay with the program that he's been with, or will he walk for the money? I, I think he, he, he has to leave. I, I, I don't think, you know, for him, he's, he's, a, he's a DH waiting to happen. I mean, he's not the, the first baseman, you know, that, that you probably need in the National League. And, and that's probably why he's not the MVP because yes, yeah. because of his field. Oh, his field. Uh, he just hasn't taken that commitment that you'd like to see out of the National League first baseman to want to win a Gold Glove. You know, mm -hmm. he he wants to come and he wants to hit. Right. And you know, his dad was an American League, you know, home run champ. Uh, it, you know, I think it, not that he ever wants to be shadowed by his father or in his father's footsteps. I think he's made that pretty clear that they're pretty distant, but. It, it, you know, not having that defense come around the way I think we've all wanted it to come around pretty much tells you that this this point in his career where his big payday is coming, he's pretty much realized that if he wants to make money and make money now, the American League is where it's going to happen. And, you know, coming out with a couple comments, you know, a few weeks ago, I think that ruffled some feathers, you know, and uh, it's it just, I think, inevitable that he's going to leave Milwaukee and we're going to have to find another first baseman. Well, that's, that's the question. Who replaces him? Well... You know, I don't think Mark Atanasio and Doug Melvin have never been afraid so far since Atanasio's owned the team of going out and, and getting talent, but now where do you find it is the thing, you know. I'm just kind of wondering that, so. Like, anyway. You know, they, they moved uh, uh, Gamels to first yep. base down in, down in minor leagues and they've tested him out there. And I think they have another guy maybe that's coming up that, that's a pretty good hitter there. I mean, so, it, you know, I think that they can look within. You know, I think where they really need their help is shortstop. Yep. You know, that's. I mean, you have to have a defender there, and right now they just they have no one that can. Yeah. You know, just knock the ball down basically. Yeah, and I think that was the thing with getting rid of El Cidis Escobar and getting Unesky Betancourt. You know, you, you sacrificed a little bit of that defense in 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 uh, Escobar to pick up the little bit of pop that you got from Betancourt at the bat. And, and I think it was a good. It was. I think it was a good even trade. Yeah. You know, you know Escobar is better defender, of course, but. Uh, and Betancourt is, you know, the 250 hitter that mm -hmm. you expected him to be. So, you know, for at least, at least it was a stopgap measure. You mm -hmm. know, if they can, if if they can fill it through a trade or, uh, you know, I don't know uh, down below what they have coming up, but uh, uh, this Green Taylor Green, his, yeah, he's a third baseman though, isn't he? Yeah, by trade. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So plenty of Brewers talk, of course, in Wisconsin now. And being a little further north than we'd like to be, of course, in Milwaukee, we don't get a lot of it up here. We get a lot of Cubs fans, but <laughs> you filter them out, and there's some Brewers garb going on. But of course, the big talk in Monaco being uh, Illinois getaway, the big game coming up Sunday, of course. It's Bear Week. It's Bear Week. So what do we expect, Ray? Well, you know, all the talk this week, of course, has been about the injuries that uh, the Packers have had and uh, and the Bears. You know, Creamy's out. Um, and the offensive line for the Bears has been, uh, you know, porous. Uh, Cutler's been 